So I'm mainly talking about the physical layer of the system and also about the 5G and the convergence of the broadcasting and the, the broadband. And uh, we're talking a little bit about 3.0 versus 4G and 5G. We're talking about uh, what we've done in Communication Research Center at CRC. And uh, we're talking about a little bit about those uh, broadband wireless systems, the 4G and the 5G, and uh, how to convergence broadcasting and the broadband. That's one of our research topic. And we'll give some conclusions. First, what's the innovative technology implemented in the 3.0 transmission system? Well, I can list these five. The first one is the uh, uh, ARDPC code. It's up to 64K lens for the 5G system. I think they are less than 20K. So we are longer, so the performance is better. Second one is called the non-uniform constellation modulation up to 4K QAM. And uh, with 5G, they're up to 1K. And I'll give you a little bit detail later. And the so-called layer division multiplexing, that's some new technology is not implementing the 5G yet. And there are also bootstrap, which integrate the time and frequency technology that's developed by the One Media. And also, probably nobody knows, actually, 3.0 and 5G and 4G share the common clock. So it can be easily integrated together. Okay, so this one on the top left part is the normal modulation constellation. When you have a noise involved, it turns into the right one. If you, you further away, you look, turn into a wrong constellation. And that exactly what ATSC did, the lower left one. That constellation is not generated by hand. It's using the supercomputer, using the artificial intelligence deep learning technology, tune the data for more than a week. It's coming out of this constellation. How good is that? Is that working? Well, it's 26% power saving. That is the technology which is not used in the 5G. They look at it, they said, too complicated. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Uh, what's on the lower right one? I'll tell you later. So this one, you can see the ATSC. There's a line drawn there by the Mr. Shannon, the father of information theory, said that's a limit of information technology. You cannot cross it. So you can see the ATSC3 with the red cross is most close to it. 5G is blue diamond. You can see that's consistent, consistently better with 3.0. So those people all three say that 5G is the best technology in the world. Mm -mm 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 -mm. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a fact. We don't argue that. We just do it. So this is uh, another technology that developed in Canada called a layer division multiplexing. What we do is uh, we pile up the signal and mess it up and transmit it. So in the so we have two layers of signal. The top layer will be for mobile service. The red one will be for the high data rate fixed. So we have a cons combined constellation like that is a mess. So if we're in the receiving end, we're there the technical processing and we'll separate the signal. So make it more clear. Basically, when we share the spectrum, usually traditionally we have two technology. Once we do time sharing, so you, we have morning news, lunchtime news, evening news, we transmit at different time. Another way is sharing the by frequency separation. Like uh, we have uh, CBC Radio Canada, TVO, CT1, CTV2, they transmit at the same time on different channel. So that's frequency sharing. So like this, 
we traditionally do the different program along the frequency direction, and we also do it around time direction. What the layer division is, we add another layer. So you can see, we're making better use of spectrum, right? We pile up more. And in the receiving end, just using signal processing technology to separate them, to make this working. So you don't have to understand how that being done, but it works. And uh, here is a little messy of all the data. You only need to read the last two lines. For the mobile service, we are, we are 3.5 power saving. For the fixed service, we have 1.7 times saving. So to show that, I'm going to show you a video. That's a demonstration carried out in Korea, in Jeju Island. This island in the middle of the ocean, and uh, they don't interfere with anybody. So you can do anything there. <laughs> so you can see, we have a two screen on the left one is the new technology. On the right one is the older technology. Uh, because we cannot, we only have one channel we have to run twice, but unfortunately we didn't synchronize video. But you can see very soon the left one will never break up. This one after frozen and it's dead. See the other one. It don't have a glitch at all. You are still dead. Well, that's three and a half times different the power. That's what coming into play, right? It's come back, but it's still frozen. It's dead again. So the other one is okay. So. So another technology we use is, is called a video part, is a scalable video. So we have a 4K UHD TV. We're using video processing technology. We transmit two, one a smaller one for mobile. And the difference in the receiving end, they got together. If you want to mobile, you only decode the one. If you want high resolution, you add these two, you got high resolution, right? What's the advantage of that? Well, we say 15% data rate, but that's not important. Somebody told me, if you transmit the two pictures, one mobile, one fixed, the content guy charge you twice. <laughs> so so you, they said, okay, you show a mobile service, you show a fixed service, you know, my movie, you, I charge you twice, right? That's fair. But if you do this, somebody told me you can get away as just charge once because I transmit it once. But you know, that, that's a lawyer talk. Jared knows, I don't know. <laughs> well, anyway, that's, that's another new technology is not used anywhere. Uh, so we have a guy show you this uh, Shannon limit. That's what I show you here, so we actually can combine the low capacity robust data with high capacity fixed transmission, and we put it together. That's where the constellation looks funny, right? That's the new technology we are adopting. And the next one we're talking about, the other things we've done at the CRC to help the implementation and deployment for the ADAC 3.0. And basically, in the future, mobile and handheld services are getting increasingly important for the future services. Like uh, there are also other things like connected car, IoT, new applications, maybe drone or something. But deliver robust mobile service to indoor and handheld devices is always challenging. For good mobile and portable services, you need to put a multiple transmitter tower, like using so-called single frequency network. So basically multiple transmitting tower. Well, in this city, we have the used to be world tallest freestanding building, CN Tower, all the transmission stations up there. 
But you still have one transmitter. If you leave behind apartment building, sorry, you don't have the signal. If you have more than one transmitters, it definitely works better. Cell phone industry knows that 50 years ago. That's why you can see their tower all over the place. That's why they can do mobile portable services. If you want to do that for broadcast signal, you should think about that. We don't need that many towers, like they are two kilometers each tower in major cities. Like broadcast tower could be 10 kilometers or more, but still you need to put in more towers. Then the problem is, how do you get the signal to those towers? Well, typically, you can using dedicated microwave links, but sorry, all the microwave band now giving for 5G. You go and apply a license, <laughs> good luck. Right? Second one, okay, you have a license. You need a new radio. That costs you quarter million US dollars <laughs> to build it, install it, that's for one tower. For the city like Toronto, Maybe you need a 10 to 15 towers. <laughs> that lots of upfront investment. Or some other people say, no problem. There are fiber to the tower. I just run the link. Yes, that's $3,000 US per month per tower. So that's very high cost if you want to run multiple towers in the city to provide better services. You have to pay, right? Like some broadcast talk to me, say, well, we know the single frequency multi-tower works better, but that costs too much. If you go to my CEO, say, I want $2 million per year to do that, and they said, that's the door, right? <laughs> so one solution is using the wireless in-band distribution system, that's what I'm talking about because the one on the top, we are assuming we're using the layer division multiplexing with two services, robot service and high data rate service. So what can do with today the video coding technology and, and the transmission technology, the upper layer in ATSC 3.0 called a core layer can provide somewhere between 3 HD or 8 standard de definition TV system. Because for mobile service, you're not going to display it on a 60-inch screen. It's a small screen. You don't need very high resolution, right? But on the high data rate system, the fixed service, you can provide somewhere between 4 to 8 HDTV services. The fact that now is, ATSC one provided one HD service in six megahertz channel. This one <laughs> is four to six times more. How you use it, right? One possibility is we cut piece of spectrum and use it for backhaul distribution signal to the multiple towers, right? That's going to save a lot of operating cost to the broadcasters. So at the beginning, we we're thinking about we, we might using 30% of a lower layer per cap capacity with more advanced technology, we, we're using MIMO, <laughs> we're using other channel bonding or something. We can get this percentage down to 15 or even to 10%. Because in that part, we can using very high order modulation and coding and throughput because this is tower to tower. Very high, I can have very strong high gain antennas. This is, we can see vision what's going to happen if we do this. We can, with one host station, we go it by stage. Then we start broadcasting. Okay, you don't like this way, you go the other way. No problem, right? If you hate this way, you can do a centralized station. Like even one tower out, 
you can roll the other way, right? It's a scalable network. It's reconfigurable, self-organizing. That's not I invented word. That's networks, network people use that for the last 30 years. <laughs> so, but if we do that, what it means, we can pipe the data two-way between towers, right? Which means in the SFN broadcast network, it can embed a wireless network among all broadcasting towers. Like it's actually not just a SFN network, even you are on different frequency, you still can have an inter-tower communication system that embedded in the broadcasting infrastructure. So you can see each tower can broadcast multimedia system out or receiving information from other towers for really backhaul broadcasting, a broadcast out and a single in system, right? So to make it simple is basically the consumer broadcasting service because the low receiving tower is coverage not very big. But this guy has very high tower. <laughs> Right, we can make this working two way. Right, this is called a full duplex transmission because you're transmitting two way on the same frequency at the same time, and you might say you are crazy. How can you transmitting two way at the same time on the same frequency? This technology being studied before 5G study, study began is pre-5G time. And uh, after study, they said, good technology, too complicated. 5G, we're not going to consider it. Maybe 6G, 7G, I don't know, but we'll look at it later. But we decided to make it working, and it works for a broadcasting system. We did all the measurement. I will present at NAB this year for the data and all the other things we are going to implement it. Maybe some people interested in building hardware system talk to me. The major problem is, is here, right? You are transmitting broadcasting signal and the other one give you a, a backhaul which is transmit in the next time frame. So you're transmitting and at the same time receiving. What happened? You have a loopback signal, which is higher than the desired signal. It looks like LDM. So what we do is we can cancel that loopback signal because I know what it is. It's local signal. It's a known signal. I can cancel, receive and cancel it and get the I want a signal out. We need a cancellation about 50 to 60 dB, but that's within the range we can do. Yeah, we, we did simulation, it works. We did the primary measurement, it works. Just we have put them together to make it working because what? I don't have receiver chips <laughs> to make it working. Yeah, because I have modulator, I don't have receiver chip. Maybe you have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that is, we see what we got. Oh, we have three services here. SFN broadcasting service. We have SFN distribution link. We have an inter-tower communication. The three services work together. So a little bit congested, but it works. And what we're looking at here, okay, we have a central tower first. We got our in-band distribution works, signal to all the towers. Second one, we have an inter-tower communication, get signal back, right? And then we have our last broadcasting services, right? 
That's how it looks like. Because you can have each small cell and major cell, whatever you like, in intertal of communication period, you can send different IoT or data service or kinetic car, whatever you want to. Right, that's a data service. It's feed your intertower link and also broadcasting in the individual cell with different services. Don't, it can be SFN, but different content. Well, 5G guy, 4G guy did it for the last 20 years. We can do it too. So here is a summary of all this system. Basically, we have a SFN broadcasting. We have in-band distribution. We have uh, inter-tower communications. Because now we are talking about at uh, uh, ATSC uh, TG3 about broadcast core networks, right? That, that can be part of core networks. Like the thing is, this network is totally independent to any telecommunication infrastructure. Internet is not reliable communication system. If it fails, the broadcast system shouldn't fail. The emergency alert cannot allow to fail. But if you have this system in there, you're standing alone, right? The broadcast can run a very robust network that can survive the nature disaster, terrorist attack, or anything, the other infrastructure fail. So a little bit talking about 5G. OK, what's the, what, 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 what is 5G? What is f f first G? Well, basically, 1G is analog services. 2G is the digital with very limited data capacity. It's short message. With 3G, also called IMT2000 by ITU, International Telecommunication <coughs> Union is the worst, uh, is voice and fast data transfer for multimedia, but not for streaming. 4G, so the older phone we have today, is more data capacity support video streaming and uh, <coughs> fast file transfer, that's called a smartphone. 5G is supposed to have a very high data capacity, massive connectivity, and low delay. And uh, for the 3GPP is the standard body for the uh, cell phone system. The standard called release, like release six is basically is a 3G. It has a MBMS system, multimedia broadcast <coughs> multicast system. It's a little broadcast system within the 3G network. And later they, they have uh, enhanced the MBMS system that's published uh, 2010 and the 2017 called the Future Enhanced EMBMS. But uh, unfortunately, all oh, this, this is never deployed. Actually, the first one, MBMS, was deployed by Verizon for maybe eight months or something because they charge $15 per month and they have a content problem and they, it was a business failure. So the, it didn't work. And for the 5G, it has to be after release 15. That's uh, the end of uh, 18, 2018. Phase two 5G will be released March this year. It's not there yet. And for the release 17, they might address the broadcasting issue, but it's uh, broadcasting within small cell. And for the 5G broadcasting, they will have it, but they don't have a timetable yet. So the 5G, really, they have a three achievement. One is a enhanced mobile broadband, high data rate. One is a massive type communication, massive machine type communication, and that's IoT, machine to machine, and vehicle to whatever. And also they break for ultra reliable and the low latency communications. That's guidelines for the 5G. What they want to achieve. So there are eight services, all the 5G carriers and the manufacturers 
pointing out, but including one broadcasting services. So they want to do that. They know broadcast is a mean for the success for the future broadband wireless system. It's on their to-do list that haven't been done yet. So this actually I covered before, like a broad, five, there were a broadband multimedia system exist, but never been implemented successfully business-wise for many, many reasons, right? The, the, the 3GPP, the standard body, decide based on the heavy workloads, they will not address 5G broadcast issue in release 16, which is coming out the next two months. Release 17 is to be decided. They might address it, they might not. So, that's leaving 3.0 in a good position. <laughs> we have a few years there's no competition. I think we have entered 2025. And another thing I want to stress, there are two things. When I talk to people, very often I find I, I, we are compared apple to orange. One is the broadcasting capability and the broadcasting system. They are separate things. The first one, broadcasting capabilities in a dense cell environment, having point to multi point compute communication in each cell is a good option to reduce the cell traffic load, <coughs> especially for hot video like Olympic opening, Super Bowl, those kind of things. This is a, only a signaling issue, allow the point to multi point in each cell to deliver high demand content. That's a small change. This might be addressed earlier in 5G system. The second one is a broadcasting system, like today's over-the-air TV system. It's the overlaid network to the broadcasting wireless infrastructure that deliver multimedia entertainment and other services, very much like a 3.0 or even today's system. Right? It's another network. So were 5G developed and deployed all overlaid high power, high tower capable, t capable TV system? Well, there are economy issues, content issues, business issue, mod business model, and the many regulation issues had to be sorted out first before that system can be deployed by carriers, right? That is the thing. I'm technical people, <laughs> you know. That, that's a thing to be considered. And also, 5G and broadcasting, like 5G will be an ecosystem that including many different standards operating on different spectrum man, bands, providing different services. 5G is generally designed for small cell point-to-point -point communication in densely populated areas. 5G might have broadcast multiple capability or subsystem, but they are not ready yet. Not for a while. Another thing is talking about the international trends on the convergence of the broadcasting and the broadband, right? I know uh, in Canada, at the CRC, we started this uh, project in 2015. And the Europeans started called uh, 5G X-Cast. X-Cast means broadcast multicast, a project in 2017 and uh, 2019. Now they are doing some field trial using self-defined radio. And in the US, you can see Cable Labs has a core network for the TV for 5G filing. And also, I know one media just released a big document about ATSC uh, core networks uh, in interconnectivity to 5G. Uh, in India, Indian standard body 
studied over the air TV broadcasting they want to use for LTE traffic offloading. And they identified ATSC3 with LDM technology is favorable to do that. And they try to find for the 3GPP. And China is kind of more radical. And the last uh, summer, the national broadcaster received a 4G license. Nobody <laughs> knows what that means. Because uh, they plan to using their 700 megahertz bands to do 5G. And also, they are going to receive some 5.8 gigahertz band for 5G deployment. I think they try to forge more competitions uh, within the broadband wireless industry, like same as in Canada, try to build more carriers. And uh, in Korea, uh, there are demonstration of LT and uh, 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 ATSC3 convergence. I'll show you a video. And also, they are going to start a uh, ATAG 5G convergence project starting April this year, and uh, we will continue our collaboration with uh, ETRI Korea and uh, CRC. ETRI is the counterpart of CRC in Korea. So, um, what is convergence? Like, uh, basically, there are three topics on convergence. One is on the service and applications, like physical layer and uh, that's what we are working on. Another convergence on policy, this policy, not spectrum policy, a telecom policy, is really is the protocol apps. And also the convergence of networking. That's talking about the core networks, broadcast core network, cable core network, satellite core networks. That's another convergence. But even talking about ATSC software, software stack, and the broadband the wireless or broadband software stack, they are very close. And they all software. They are not hardware. You just load it. You probably only the last layer, physical layer, is different. So there's no problem to put a ATSC 3 chip in a smartphone. By the way, just in these things. There are 2G, 3G, 4G will have 5G chips in it. There are Bluetooth, there are Wi-Fi, the near field communications is already seven. You put about ATSG3, it shouldn't be a technical problem. That's something else. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so I show you another video. What video we put is, it's all, again in Korea, in Jeju Island. We put the ATSC signal in the air and also put the, the same video over the LTE 4G networks. So they can, you can say it can switch seamlessly. But at one catch, because I, I told I don't like your demo, you made ATSC really bad. It needs a 4G network to back it up. What kind of thing is that? He said, well, you know, you told us like, I told them to do a demo with, uh, if you go out, you ATAC3, you get in the building, you should automatically switch to the Wi-Fi because that's nature because you cannot boost your power 10 to 20 times to cover the indoor. Indoor, you should be using Wi-Fi. And they did it, but, but they didn't show that demo. And they, they told me, say, we think we cannot show our big boss this kind of demo because we show, hey, big boss, you go into the building, or big boss, you go outside the building, or big boss, you go into the building again. Then what you see, you see nothing changes. <laughs> he said, that's not a very good demo. So what they did is they reduced ATS3 transmitter power by 10 times, deliberately generate many holes in the city. And they're driving the car around with their big boss. And to see, you can, you, you, so you, you can see the, the seamless co conversion between broadband and broadcasting. You see? But you, you see the glitch? There's no glitch. Yeah, it's seamless switching. So which means that's your real IP standard. 
You can go anywhere you want. You get on the LT, you got a 5G, you can get on the Wi-Fi. In the future, the consumers will get their signal by some way. They don't care. They don't even want to know. That's the connected world. That's the connected society. They need to be many communication means coexist, not just one. Each have their ad advantage. So the big thing is uh, the, the North Korean broadcast by the bullet, make it IP centric. I think that's the most important thing. Yeah. So as a summary, like uh, 3.0 next generation TV is 5G ready. It could be part of the 5G ecosystem as part of the wireless connected world. 3.0 and 5G share many common components. IP transport, HTML, JavaScript, audio video, and many other things. ATSC3 can deliver multimedia service to mobile and fixed terminals in large geometric areas. That's one too many communications to large amount of terminals simultaneously. That's the advantage of the broadcasting system. So as a conclusion, 3.0 is an IP-centric broadcast system. It is designed for multimedia broadcasting to large amount of users in widely distributed area. It can be part of the future wireless ecosystem. 5D is designed for small cell dense population area to deal with exponential increase of data traffic and connectivity. It will need a large cell overlay network to distribute point to multi-point and broadcast style services. 3.0 and 5G can complement each other to contribute to the digital economy. That's my presentation. Thank you. So, any questions? Satellite communication from tower, you said. Yeah. Uh, you mean? Using a satellite. Yes. And distributing a signal from satellite back to another tower. Yeah, well, that's what they are doing now <laughs> at, at the CVC. Because that is a, basically that's a backhaul or distribution link, not for the consumers. Okay, but using the Yes, but the thing is, uh, first, uh, you might know, satellite is in the spring and the fall. Each day, you have 20 minutes sun outage. You don't have transmission. Broadcast cannot stand that, right? And also, I'm talking about backhaul is more localized. Satellite is much bigger, like Telesat is half Canada coverage, no smaller than that. It's bigger. And, uh, well, each transponder is two million dollars rental per year. I I I I don't see the broadcast. <laughs> We're using the satellite for the backhaul on that because of cost issue. Right, but there are areas even within the internet that you can't get internet signal high speed outside of the metropolitan area. Yes, right. That is uh, like an industry in Canada. There's a project called Connected Canadians, and. Uh, I think two years ago, CRTC directed so all the Canadians deserve to have a 50 megabit downstream and 10 megabit upstream. So I think the federal government is working on that. It's not there yet. And I think this budget allocated $1.7 billion for that cost. That, that's in Canada. Hi, uh, question. Uh, how are you handling the timing, deliver the timing of delivering signal in the SFN? Yeah. So I didn't, I delete that no, slide. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Universal clock. Yeah. yeah, it's locked to the universal clock, and timing is, uh, you, you have a timing T delay, 1T, 2T, 3T. Right. Yes, you, you, you need that. Well, but that is part of SFN. 
But the SFN would, would each each transmitter within the SFN network would would 